Hello there, this is the Shadow Ranger and this is my review of NWA Championship Wrestling from Hollywood for December 24th, 2010. Um, this episode was actually uploaded online the day it aired, and which was a very nice Christmas present for me. I didn't have to wait three or four days to see it like I normally do, and I was glad that happened because I was really looking forward to seeing the show this week. Uh, first off, I want to mention that we are in a new arena, the Showcase Theater. This place looks nice, and it looks like it holds more people than the Galaxy Theater did. However, my first impression of the building isn't a great one. I think it's the dim lighting that throws it off a bit for me. I'm not sure why it's so dark looking. I mean, seriously, somebody turn on the light. Also, the crowd wasn't huge for this first taping, but once they start getting more people in the building, you're going to have a nice looking a crowd and an all around nice looking setup. So I'm hoping to have more people come out for the next taping. We start off the night with Slim and Skull Crusher Rashi Brown versus The Tribe. You'll recall the altercation that these men had last week. Slim starts off with a little disrespect for The Tribe. I would not want to be senior official Rick Knox in this matchup. Look at that Slim showing disrespect. Hey! This wasn't really a technical match. It was four big beefy dudes beating on each other. I liked everyone in this match except Slim. As I said before, he just doesn't do it for me. Maybe I just need to see more of him. Unfortunately though, the referees were the losers in this match. Check it out. Look at that. He got in the ring. Look, this is the referee. A uh, referee shoved down again, and now Patrick <laughs> Hernandez eats an elbow. This thing is broken down in a hurry. Oh my goodness! Wow! Oh, referees are flying out of the way. We also get to hear a little from Skull Crusher afterwards. Next, we have a promo with Colt Cabana talking about his upcoming match with Adam Pearce. Okay, folks, the war is brewing for the World's Heavyweight Championship here in the National Wrestling Alliance. And the man behind me, Colt Boom Boom Cabana, you have a big week next week. The fans pick the stipulation. That's right, Marquez. The fans are going to pick the stipulation. We are taking the power out of the hands of the NWA board. We are taking the power out of any professional wrestler, and we are giving it to the people. You guys at home, you are going to decide my fate. It's you guys. It's especially not you, Adam Pierce. Scrap Iron Adam Pierce, the NWA Heavyweight Champion, has tried to make his own fate. He has tried to take his own power in his own hands. He's done that by hitting me with the title. He's done that by cheating in his matches with myself when the goal was on the line. Well, you have the power no longer, Adam Pierce. And here was a special preview for you before, because it was an eight-man tag. It was four on four. The NWA said, we're going to take the, the, the eight greatest wrestlers that we have here in the NWA, and we're going to put them on each side. And you know who survived at the end of that one, Dave? You know. It was me. It was Colt Boom Boom Cabana was the man that survived the eight best wrestlers in the NWA. And you know who the last man in that match was in the middle of the ring saying, I can't take no more. I am done. I give up. You are the better wrestler. That was you, Pierce. Scrap Daddy, you were the one that sat in the middle of the ring and said, I give up. And next week, the fans now decide. The fans now choose. It's an even playing field. You have zero power, Pierce. The only power you have is in your wrestling ability. And frankly, even though you are the NWA heavyweight champion, I know you have a lot of wrestling ability, Pierce. But I don't think you have enough when the playing field is even and Colt Boom Boom Cabana has the people on his side. It's going to be 2011. It's going to be a new year. We're going to celebrate with me and Hollywood and the world. It's Colt Cabana. It's going to be your new NWA heavyweight champion. It's going to be a celebration. And the first drink's on me, Dave. We're going to get you lit. <laughs> That's right. Next week, fans, you pick the stipulation. 
Next up is the untouchable Ruben Iglesias versus Rico Dynamite. This is my first look at Ruben Iglesias. I don't have any complaints about the guy, but also nothing of note to really praise about him. He seems to be good in the ring, and I do want to see more of what he has to offer. Also during the match, we noticed that Rico has a very excited and um, busty fan at ringside. And Rico takes time out of the match to show that he isn't one to disappoint his fans. There happens to be a match going on here. I don't... Rico, Rico. Is he giving her? Oh, wait oh my a goodness. second. Well, that's, that's the gift that keeps on giving there. Oh my goodness. Uh, Rico, get back in the ring. That's. <laughs> hey, what just happened right there, Todd Kinley? Rico picks up the win easily. I wasn't too interested in Rico the first time I saw him, but I am more interested in seeing him now. I'm actually looking forward to his next match. Interacting with the fan at ringside was a nice touch. If she was a plant, then it was a good move by the bookers. If she was a real fan, then it was a good move by Rico. Next up is Joey Ryan versus Ryan Ramos. As I said in a previous video, something about Joey Ryan is off-putting for me. I think it's that he doesn't come off as the baby face that they're portraying him as. He feels more like a heel that's pretending to be a babyface. But, I don't know. Joey picks up an easy win and then he has a few words to say after the match. We then see a replay of the ending of last week's 8-man tag. This leads us into a promo with the World Heavyweight Champion Scrap Iron Adam Pearce giving his thoughts about his upcoming match with Colt Cabana. Okay folks, you saw the videotape right there. A war is definitely brewing for the NWA World's Heavyweight Championship. The Scrap Iron Adam Pearce and Colt Boom Boom Cabana. Now I'm going to bring him in right here. Here is our World's Heavyweight Champion right now. Now, I don't know why you're smirking because... Next week, it's a very special match that you have coming up for the world's title and with Colt Boom Boom Cabana. You know, the fans, they're going to pick the stipulation. And that's symptomatic, David Marquez, of all the deficiencies in the National Wrestling Alliance. You saw the footage. Make your own judgment. I have run like a hot knife through butter through everybody in the NWA, including Colt Cabana. Can you dispute that? No, not at all. You can't say a word about it. So now what do they do? Charlotte, North Carolina, the benevolent people that run this organization. I'm talking to Bob Trovich, and I'm talking to people like you, and mostly I'm talking to the people at home. You now choose the stipulation. How ironic is that, David Marquez? The fans, who, by the way, have no calling in this business, have no place, 
have no authority. They somehow get to determine what I'm going to be put through. They somehow get to determine what Colt Cabana is going to be put through. And I'm sure you like that, don't you? Well, you know, the power of the people. The power of the people. The power of the people is not going to be very strong next week. Because listen to what's going to happen. You sitting at home right now, you fat pigs on your couch. As you are buttering up to a bag of Doritos, you are going to choose a stipulation for two men to enter the ring with the greatest prize in our sport at stake. And you, every single one of you, you included, because I don't think for a minute that you're not behind this, you, you are going to have the blood on your hands. Because I don't know what you're going to put us in. I don't know what war is going to be brewing. But what I know, David Marquez, is that this is 10 pounds of leather and gold. And what does this signify? It signifies that every day of my life, I'm the best at what I do. So if I've got to listen to you at home, and you're going to tell me what to do, don't think for an instant that I'm not going to be ahead of you. Colt Cabana, a man I've known for 15 years. You understand that? There isn't anything that we've been through that both of us haven't learned off of each other. He knows me better than anybody in the professional wrestling business. And I know him better than anybody else, too. If you people think you're going to put us in a scenario that we haven't been through already, you're done. Colt Cabana, just remember, as you pine for the adulation of these people, as you clamor for their attention and you smile and they clap and they cheer, your blood, your blood is now on all their hands. You people are choosing the stipulation. Just remember, choose wisely. There he is, the world's heavyweight champion. And next week, you folks at home pick the stipulation. I mentioned before that Willie Mack quickly became my favorite person on this show. Adam Pierce is a very, very close second. I like this guy a lot. I like everything about him. He's great in the ring. He's great on the mic. And he just has a persona that makes me want to keep tuning in to see him. Next up is Andrew Hellman versus Cedric the Hitman. The commentators talked about these two having a past. I'm not familiar with what that past is. It must have happened before I started watching this show. As for the match, it was just... Eh, for me. There were a few hard-hitting moves like this one. Story is a storied war. That's exactly what it is. Oh, my goodness. Some lower back pain by Andrew Hellman tonight. Yeah, he might need to add another brace. Here comes oh! nowhere to run in the corner. Drop kicks him right in the face. But as a whole, neither guy impressed me this week. This was my first time seeing Hellman, so I'll have to see more of him before I can really form an opinion. Although I could have done without the constant yeah buddies. Hellman gets the win, but Cedric isn't done fighting strike but he might lack the finesse and that's how Hellman was able to beat him there with a nice counter wrestling move wait a second oh he absolutely waffles him with that briefcase what did I tell you Hellman what did I tell you what did I tell you you stinking son of a gun I want Cedric the hitman you. telling Andrew yeah, Hellman exactly yeah. what he thinks about him oh he completely <laughs> took him out with that shot Next up is our main event, and it is for the NWA Heritage Tag Team Championships. The champions, Johnny Yuma and Johnny Goodtime, the Rock Ness Monsters, defend against Sean Ricker and Brian Cage, Natural Selection. Just like last time, I have nothing but good things to say about these two teams. I enjoyed the last time that I saw these two teams face each other, and I liked it this time. Here, check out a few highlights of the match. Senton to the floor. Uh, Johnny Goodtime. All he needs is a launch pad. Oh my god. Oh my god. I can't believe that. Here's some more of that double teaming Whoa. by the champions. Here comes Goodtime. Yes. Now into the cover. Come on, Patrick Hernandez. Let's open the fist up. Be the right referee. Got to play by the rules here. No cheat codes here tonight. Sean Ricker going to the middle rope there. Devastating action there. Demolished him, you might say. Here's the 
Although I liked the last match a lot more, this match was by no means a bad match. These teams put on another good show and I was very entertained. Using a little underhanded tactics, Natural Selection picks up the win and we have new champions. Take a look. Hits him in the midsection. Oh! Tease him, spikes him on the title. Gets rid of the evidence. Oh, not this way. Come on, ref. Get in there, ref. Get in there, ref. Not this way. Here's the cover, two and three. Yeah! Natural. History has been made. One thing that I liked was that the title match was the main event, even though it isn't the main storyline of the show. This is a small complaint that I sometimes have with WWE and TNA. They, they don't do small things to make their championships seem important. I think that anytime you have a title match on TV, it should be the main event. I think it shows that the titles are important, that makes the fans see them as important, which means the fans will want to see them defend it and be more likely to buy tickets to a show if there's a title match on the show. But you know, that's just my opinion. Overall, this was another good episode of NWA Championship Wrestling from Hollywood. My only complaint, as always, there was no Willie Mack on the show this week. Unacceptable NWA. Also, where is Johnny LaQuasto? I like LaQuasto. But other than that, the NWA has once again given me an entertaining hour of television and a reason to come back next week. I will be back to watch next week and with another review, I hope you'll be watching too. This, If you are not watching this show, you are missing out on something very good. And I strongly encourage everyone to check it out. Um, if you like my videos, please subscribe and let other people know about them so I can get more views up. This is the Shadow Ranger. Thank you for listening. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year.